Hello and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial by Flowmotion. And today I am going to show you how you can animate your still images so that they look as if they were filmed. So why don't you just follow me into After Effects. Let me quickly show you what we are going to create. And basically it's this effect that you see here. It's all just still images but they look as if they were three dimensional. So how do we do that? So I've already prepared something, which is a main composition. And if I'm going to the composition settings, you can see it's 1920 by 1080, which is standard HDTV, so nothing special. And inside there, there's a pic of a young lady. So I just pre-composed it to be the exact same size as my composition. And this is the image that we want to work with. And in the end, it should look like we have filmed her instead of just taking a photo. And the effect that we are going to use for all of this is going to be the displacement map. So to understand what the effect is doing, let me just quickly show it to you. We're gonna create a new composition, call it our test comp, and I'm going to create a new solid by hitting Control Y. Let's just make it white. We add a checkerboard effect to it, make another solid, make this one black and put it behind it and pre-compose this as our checkerboard. So now let's apply the displacement map effect to it. And by default you see that it is doing something weird here because by default we already have values typed in here. So let's just bring them back to zero and we are back to normal. And the nice thing about this effect is that we can create a layer which we use to displace it. So let's just do this. I'm going to create a new solid. Let's call this our map or even better, let's call this our displacement map. And we hit okay. And let's just apply a ramp effect to it because this helps to understand the effect. So there are two things you need to be aware of when you use this effect. First thing is, the brighter the image is, so here in the white areas, the image will get more displaced. And where it is black, it will get displaced in the other direction. And where it is gray, there will be no displacement at all. And the second thing you need to know is that this only works if you pre-compose it and all the effects need to be inside the composition. So let's pre-compose this by hitting Control, Shift and C. Call it Displacement Map Comp and we move all attributes into this composition. So we don't even need to see it, so we can disable the eye. Back on our checkerboard, let's now use the layer we just created, the Displacement Map. And we can't see nothing because we are set to zero and we want to use the luminance, so the black to white information to drive the effect for our horizontal displays as well as our vertical displays. So now when I'm dragging this up, you see where it was white or where our map is white, we are getting a distortion in one direction. Where it is gray, nothing is happening. And in the back where it is black, it gets distorted in the other direction. And the same for the vertical displacement. Going back to our main comp here, this is exactly what we want. We want to have the parts that are closer to the camera brighter. So when we later on play with our effect, things that are closer to the camera move more and therefore we get a parallax effect. And if you want to do it even more, we can tint our background to black. So in this way we even get more of a parallax effect to it. So, having said all of that, let's get starting with creating our displacement map, but this time not as simple as this one, but a displacement map for that young lady here. So now in our main comp, let's also create a displacement map with all the depth information, all the black to white information we need to get this going. So let's just create a new layer, call it our displacement map, and hit OK. And as we have learned, we can directly pre-compose this, hit OK. And in here, we are now going to start to create the map. So what I'm doing now is I also import 
the pick in here and I'm going to set this as a guide layer. So by clicking with the right mouse button you can set it as a guide layer and what this does it only appears in our displacement composition but not when I go back to our main comp it's just black because when I'm going in it again we only see the black layer and this is a really nice way because now we can use that pick as a reference but we don't have to worry that it gets rendered or does anything with the effect later on. So let's get started. We already have a back layer for our background and now let's just create a new layer. This time let's just make it gray so 50% and now let's just draw a shape around the head. And I'm just going for the shape of the head without concerning too much about the ears or hair or the glasses. It's really just the shape of the head that I want to have here. Now let's apply a gradient ramp again to it and this time we don't want it to be a linear ramp but a radial ramp. So we can just set it like this and just swap the colors. So in this way we have like a fall off from where the nose would be something like this and maybe we don't want to go all the way black so just brighten this up a bit same for the white don't want to go white all the way because I also want to have the glasses and her nose later on and they are more in the front than just the face layer that we are creating here so let's call this face and let's just go to the next one which will be the nose again I'm just creating a new layer this time I am drawing the nose shape. This time I'm using once again the gradient ramp effect. Make it radial, swap the colors and this time this should be the brightest part and for the black part I'm just taking that color that is over there in this way I get a really nice fall off maybe just like so and we can also feather this just like so. Now let's create the glasses The more precise you're working now, the better the effect will look in the end. So let's just create one or two more layers. And if you can't wait to see the final result, hey, feel free and just skip to the end of the video. There you will see it. There we have the glass. Let's just make this a little bit brighter. And therefore, I'm using a levels effect. Just bring it onto the glass and get rid of the dark part. Great. So let's just do one or two more layers for the hair. And I'm going to feather this one just a little bit. I'm also going to create just one layer for this, I don't know how to call it, fabric part. This time I'm using the ramp effect again from white to gray also feather this a little bit. Why don't we just take a look on how this is going to look at the moment. Maybe one last thing. Let's add the neck so that this doesn't look strange in the end. Let's just bring this beneath the face and again use the levels effect to darken it darker than the face. So get rid of the white here. So let's go back into our main composition Let's bring the displacement map just beneath our image. Add the displacement map effect. Again, we set it just to zero to have a good start. Set it to luminance for both horizontal and vertical and then we choose our displacement map. And now let's see what we can do here. Whoa, this is looking really nice. Of course, you can overdo it and if you get too much of a distortion in some parts of the image, you can just feather your displacement mat a bit more. And I'm just doing a quick preview for like four seconds. And there we have it. Simple and easy and also hard and difficult, depending on what we are going for. You can just use a still image where you have a landscape and a background and then you just use the sky, make it black and make a ramp 
on the floor and then you just have this nice parallax effect to your landscape images really beautiful or you can go the way I have done it now and try to paint it as good as possible and really come up with great looking effects and why not think outside the box you could also use motion graphics and just give them a little bit more depth or why don't you just integrate like letters or graphics into images and just tint them gray and then you can offset them together with the image so i hope you learned a little bit about the displacement map effect which is really really powerful and now i wish you a lot of fun importing your own pictures and starting to three-dimensionalize them.